morning and thank you for staying with us. I-24 News Morning Edition, where you should definitely be every morning. Now, video games have long been stirring controversies of various kinds, being judged for violent content and their addictive qualities. Games have also been used in propaganda material, such as series of games recently released by the Hezbollah, that's a terror group in Lebanon. But on the other side of the fence, educators and social activists are repeatedly trying to develop video games that would further educational content or serve as, soft, as thoughtful art. Now, gathering yesterday at the first Israeli convention of worldwide organization Games for Changed, and that is what they did. We are joined after that very long introduction, by author, game designer, usually our geek extraordinaire, Ziv Kitao. Yeah. Ziv, what do you have for us? And basically, you were there yesterday, yes. right? Yes, yes. Uh, it was, as you said, it's the first uh, convention here in Israel, uh, in, in New York. Was, it will be the 10th uh, year that they're meeting up. And the whole idea is this. Games, no matter what people say... You're going to say are good for you. And before you continue, yes. we're going to take a look at the report. All right, let's see. There you go. Games for Change, a loosely knit worldwide association of game designers, players, educators, and people of many other walks of life, has landed in Israel with a first convention aimed at discussing how video games, so often considered to be the scourge of parents and teachers, can be used for positive social change. I think it's a young industry. Uh, you know, cinema also took time to, to grow from being just a gimmick that people take their children to, to something that's serious and, 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 and uh, you know, academic. So it's just a matter of time until games uh, get to the same point. Basically, to uh, make parents and, and people in general just understand that games is not just about people running around shooting Nazis. There are varied genres, varied styles, a lot of different things you can do. It's not all Call of Duty. There are many different games to try out. At the convention, the local indie developers were all over the place presenting their games, each with its own agenda. The strategy game Peacemaker is one such game. It is a single uh, player game in which you can play the role of the Israeli Prime Minister or the role of the Palestinian President and deal with various events in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict by security, diplomatic and uh, construction uh, actions. But with all due respect to the developers seeking to inject some serious content along with their games, as far as crowd appeal goes, it seems they still have a way to go. At the convention, the many young players, mostly between the ages of 12 to 16, crowded in huge lines against the Xbox stations, displaying mainstream shooter games, while the educational games registered numbers that were underwhelming. There's still work to be done on games in order to make them really engaging and interesting for, for uh, kids to be engaged with them, to want to play them. One of the major issues that we had in the 80s and in the 90s were games that were educational. They, they, were, they were basically uh, lessons from class disguised as games, and kids understand that. In the meanwhile, games for change game on and compete for the hearts and minds of a generation already described as digital natives. Here we go, guys. Okay, um, Ziv Kitaro join us, joins us. I'm a game designer, and I want to start by saying that it looks like Geeks Gone Wild yesterday in Rishon Ah, uh, sort of. It can, like, it can get, get worse. Get it can get worse. No, no, but let's touch on this thing in terms yes. of games, because you seem to claim and maintain that, you know, game, video games that are very addictive to young children these yeah. days um, do not lead to violence, which is the argument that many education... I'm, I'm, I want to say two things. One is that games are an art form. There are media like movies, like books, like comic books, like painting or, or, or sculptures. They have the potential of doing far better than those media in educating people because so. of their engagement. People act in games. When you watch a movie, you do not act. You're you are passive. You uh, you could enjoy a, a movie. You can learn from it, okay? Because you're going through an experience, but you do not act within it. Once you act in a game, you become involved in ways that no other media can can do it. That is why games are highly addictive. This is no, why they like, have the also thing, but... sometimes they have bad influence. But research today, even today, with all the research that have, that was done. There is no research that says because A played this game, he became violent. 
on the contrary, you might say that people who are prone to violence play violent game and uh, later on they do violent okay, things. Okay, before the violence thing, you know, the addictive quality of, you know, if, if personally, you know, the Candy Crush thing. Yeah. Okay. It just shows you what the potential of games can be. The but isn't is, that an inherent part of them? It, it's like it, saying that, well, you know, McDonald's is yummy, but everybody knows that it's bad for no, you. No, because there are, game, there are games that are less addictive than can, Candy Crush, right? There are many games that pass the time and you can log out and it's okay. And then you have this insane thing like Candy Crush that suddenly people are hooked to it. It that shows you, it shows you, yeah, yes, sometimes okay. it shows you the potential. <laughs> but the thing is that because the potential is there, it doesn't mean that every game is going to be bad and influence you in, a, in the wrong way. It just means that the game is something that people should use as a media to teach people And in terms anything. of the educational content, yes. for example, yesterday in the um, uh, you know, interesting stuff, yesterday at the um, uh, convention, what type of educational content um, do, you, do game designers, as yourself, try to put into you know, so, as and we do said, those sell as Candy Crush? So. so, no, they don't sell because one of the major problems today is that when we create educational games, we're still creating an educational creature mm -hmm. that we try to uh, uh, wrap with a game mechanic. What we need to do is create a game that it, the, the value that it brings is, is educational. For example, just to just give you a framework to work with, uh, Assassin's Creed is a game about you playing an assassin, but the game takes place. <laughs> yeah. The game takes place within uh, uh, um, Jerusalem, Venice, Florence, uh, uh, um, uh, Acres, and oh, when come you on. go you through, say, I'm, what, saying, you're getting a geography I'm saying, while I'm you're saying people? that if you <laughs> drop the assassin part, and you would create a game where you explore those places, where you, you have to find, where you have to find the secret, like in the Da Vinci Code, you will have people playing that game, learning history, learning how these places looked in the past, and you know, come out with better knowledge of the world around them. All you have to do is drop the assassin and create an engaging story of you as an explorer that goes around. But it's like chicken and the egg, and the argument would be that maybe people are engaged when they have guns and games. No, because, so, okay, you know, that's that's for us to prove, yeah, right? Let's it, say that. It, that's true in that respect. Now, you also, you were part of this convention, and you yeah. spoke in that convention. What, you know, what about? Because uh, you weren't there. My, my uh, goal for the next year, uh, 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 for start, is to create a game that touches upon the Holocaust. To create... Um, wow. Yeah, to create... There are two examples. One of them is called Train. was created by Brenda uh, um, uh, Romero, or the, she has another name. And in that game, it, it's not a game, it's not a game that you can sell at stores, but it's a game <sighs> that gives you an experience which teaches you something about the Holocaust. The basic premise here is that you have people that you want to put on trains, okay? Right. And think about it, you don't know it's about the Holocaust. You, they just tell you, this is a train, you have people, you have to transfer them from one station to the other, okay? It can be any anything from yeah. Tel Aviv to This to is a game that Haifa. already exists? Yeah, it already exists. Okay. And your your job is to be efficient, bring as many people from one point to the other. Your when you to get to German. the end, when you get to the end, you pick up a card that says where you're going, and then it says something like Auschwitz. Then people who played it understand what they done. They became efficient at moving people to Auschwitz. And this makes a huge difference. Only. How? I mean, I'm That's, sorry, I have to argue, this is terrifying. It is terrifying. This shows you what a game can do and how it can change. And people who play that game, she, she ran around... She who went play? Around. I mean, this is a game designed for she, children? Yeah, children and grown-ups. She, she took it all around the U.S. Uh, to museums and all sorts of and events. And it proven it, what, what, it's been sold commercially in the it U.S.? Did, it did, no. That's what I said. It, it was not sold. She moved around with one copy of the game that she made, and she had a uh, really... I would say a good experience with it because it showed her that people did take interest in it. No, they, but taking interest in it, them. at the end of the day, I'm sorry, this is a game, and I, you know, I have to counter, counter, counterpart this. Yes. This is a game at the end of the day that you basically congratulations, you just become a Nazi. It congratulations, you it now understand what happened there better than you did N ten minutes how? ago. How? By by the efficiency of, because of you, the you regime. Because you couldn't you couldn't understand before that what it meant. You 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 didn't know exactly what it was like, you know, getting 
the whole experience I've you just yet, heard about. I've, again, I mean, I have to say, that's, and I think there are a lot of educational elements that can be brought into games, as you said before, but at the end of the day, that's one game, for example, I will never buy my child. You do not buy that. No, she or, doesn't or, want to sell it. Or, you know, or have my child play. Well, um, but, Ziv Tower, yes. fascinating stuff. Nonetheless, stay with us. We're moving to something completely different. Uh, Ron, yeah, no, 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 I know. But in that respect, um, uh, Ron Jacobson. Uh, of uh, you know of of Hollywood and entertainment um, uh, extravaganza. You're here with some them, uh, weekly news for us. Tell me they don't involve Nazis. Not at all. Okay. <laughs> I really need to take a long breath after this segment because he had me for. I'm like, what am I gonna say now no, that no. is gonna top that? No, well, don't so, put us on the train. So fascinating. <laughs> yes. And. Anyway, so uh, we're talking about Hollywood and award season. So yeah. it's it kicked off, you know, oh, see, now you're like almost falling asleep. No, oh, no, another no, no, award no, no, season. No, no, another... award season, yeah. <laughs> New York Film Critics Circle has announced their winners for this year's, uh, uh, and this is American Hustle, the uh, David O. Russell movie. Okay. Um, um, you know, he did uh, uh, the Silver Lining Playbook. And the clip, right, right, and, right. and the Fighter before. Uh, this movie uh, got Best Movie and Screenplay, and Jennifer Lawrence, who also was in the other movie, is now in this. Is, and one uh, best supporting Very actress, uh, yes. <laughs> and we talked about it just a few weeks ago. But the uh, right. Hunger Games, right? Remember? Yes, the Hunger she does, Games. She right. does the the artistic and uh, uh, the um, big blockbuster movie. So anyway, uh, a big disappointment for uh, Twelve Years Slave, Gravity, and uh, uh, Inside Leyland Davis. And what is interesting is that a movie that came out. Uh, Robert Redford, who is uh, 77. <laughs> I was about to say, we know who he is. How <laughs> he old is? is uh, uh, in 77? 77. Wow. Is back as an actor and won Best Actor Award for that uh, circle. Interesting. And uh, Jared Leet, uh, Leto uh, for the Dallas Bio Club. And now he plays a transvestite in that movie as Best Supporting Actor. Uh, interesting to follow. Works. I mean, uh, were you even alive during Tootsie? Okay. Yes. <laughs> no. I'm just I was, the question was, I was a should month I say yes old. Old. The yeah. question is, should I say yes and date myself or not? No, That's no, right. no, that no, was no, the no, thing no. here. Okay. Give me a baby. Yes. To our next item, um, uh, Bob Dylan um, yes. is getting into hot water over what something that, that he said a, that was published and said a year ago at, in the uh, French version of Rolling Stone, where um, he compared, kind of compared Croats to Nazis. Now, uh, in France, I, apparently this everybody's is... Everybody's uh, bringing me Nazis today. Yes, okay. Uh, yeah, I didn't think about it. <laughs> yeah, come on. Okay, he compares uh, Croats to Nazis. It is, I mean, I gotta say, though, that the Croatians during World War II were terribly violent. Yeah, but the, the thing is, okay, he yeah. said it in a, in, in a soundbite that um, the uh, reporter asked him about uh, slavery in, in the U.S., and somehow right. he said something like uh, uh, he compared Croats and Nazis and whatever, and... Uh, God. There is a league of Croats in France, and they're suing him. And they're very upset. And they're very upset. And uh, yes. Uh, so that, that lawsuit just happened. They, they they just sued him. Yes, they sued him. He was investigated last month as he got the the award of the Legion of yeah, France, which is France. like the highest uh, award. I know in... for freedom and I remember they're gonna leave Bob Dylan alone. <laughs> I'm just no. happy he's alive. I I, I, I was sure exactly. he was dead. Let's I was sure he was dead. So <laughs> yeah, yeah he looked at our right. items and he <laughs> said, "Oh, isn't he dead?" I'm like, "Ziv." Go back to games. <laughs> oh um, God! Yeah. Uh, sad story this week. Paul Walker, who is was 40 years old, uh, died this week in a car accident. He's the star of um, uh, Fast, Fast and, and Furious. Furious. Series, uh, right. He was, uh, you know, he was uh, the perfect. Uh, looking American guy. He, whenever they wanted someone to be cast as, you know, the gorgeous man, lead, blue eyes, blonde, uh, now you've six interviewed him in the I've past. interviewed him like seven times in the past, and he's uh, a really down to earth, nice guy. We always related about the parenting thing he's got. Well, his daughter is 15. Uh, um, he's 40, he's got a 15 year old daughter? Yes. Wow, it was 40. Um, I'm sorry, it's a sad story. Yeah. Uh, yes, he, um, it was a, a girlfriend, one night stand. I don't know, but uh, yeah. nonetheless, they kept the baby and uh, I was very happy about he was very happy about it yeah. uh, anyway um, he was he was not even driving the car it was a Porsche uh, a friend of his uh, who is his uh, business manager was driving and they just uh, got into a, a pole into a, and died on the right. spot um, and then in that respect you know this got a lot of play in Hollywood right this got a lot of reportage right in yeah. terms of yeah um, it's amazing uh, and uh, ironically he came from an event uh, of his charity 
his daughter was with him at the event and the question that everybody wanted to ask is did she see her dad die and yesterday the police confirmed that she did not oh, uh, God. thank God yeah. and of course Hollywood being Hollywood they're already scrapping their head how are they going to finish uh, this whole oh Fast and God. Furious thing because they're already <laughs> shooting the seventh movie in the segment which is supposed to be released in July next July and he has shot most of his scenes and now they're thinking of how will they uh, write rewrite the rewrite script the so, script so uh, yes. unbelievable it no. is Hollywood no, it is Hollywood anyway it's just a franchise name and how uh, sadly you know he ended up his life that is you know uh, tragic in so many ways but Ron thank you so much for joining us this morning always with the most fascinating stuff Ziv Kital my god Yes, you are definitely an amazing individual. <laughs> uh, that's it for us, folks. Uh, we will, well, you can visit us on the web or on our Facebook page, I24 News. And don't forget to join us tomorrow for another morning edition to start your day, as you should be doing every single day.